Hiram Young and the other founding fathers of the St. Paul African Methodist Episcopal Church petitioned for a pastor to be sent to this place. So, in 1866, this pastor was commissioned to Independence to fill that space. This man served for three years, but God had greater things in store. He went on to become the first black man in Mississippi to serve on the Senate floor. I'm Reverend Hiram Rhodes Rebels, born September 27, 1827. I was born to a father of African ancestry. My mother was European, which later became an awesome strategizing mark for God to usher me into politics. <laughs> At the age of 11, I went, I moved from Fayetteville, North Carolina, and I moved to uh, Carrollton, uh, North Carolina, to live with my brother, Elias, who was a barber. He trained me the trade, uh, taught me the trade. At the age of 15, my brother died. <laughs> But before his wife remarried, she had the business put in my name. Well, I worked and I earned a living there for a while, but at the age of 18, I was called into the gospel ministry. At the age of 18, I started to preach. I was ordained as an African Methodist Episcopal preacher. Amen. I served throughout the Midwest, Indiana, Illinois. Kansas and Missouri. It was in Leavenworth, Kansas that I met her father, Hiram Young. I was there as a chaplain for the Union Army recruiting soldiers. Her father was there petitioning the Conference of Churches to have a church started here in Independence. I was elected the first pastor for the little church that was down on Nolan Road and White Oak. St. Paul, African Methodist Episcopal. Mm -hmm. I was the first pastor, y'all. No, <laughs> Amen. Amen. It's church work. Amen. 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 Well, my ministry, along with the rest of my dealings, were met with opposition. Never did I experience violence, but it was in Missouri that I was actually imprisoned for preaching the gospel of Jesus Christ to blacks. It was met with much opposition. Well, after the ministry, I was kind of miraculously ushered into politics. Now, I had never been to a political meeting. I had never, ever spoke at a political meeting. Of course, I hadn't been to one. <laughs> and I had never voted. Yet, as my wife and five daughters, we settled in Natchez, Mississippi. And I was serving as an alderman trying to help the reconstruction of that city. I was asked to pray at the state legislative office. And in that chamber of senators, God used me in a mighty way with a very eloquent, eloquent prayer. And a man by the name of John... B. Lynch, a congressman of Mississippi, said that he believed that that prayer earned me the position of senator. They heard me pray and they said a few things. They said, one, this man can really speak. And they assumed that I was a Republican. <laughs> I love it. And they saw the favor of God upon my life and believed I was going to obtain or attain great things. <laughs> so I was elected by a landslide vote to be the first black senator. But as I was on my way to Washington, D.C. to be sworn in, as we got there, the gallery was packed with people. They were ready to argue and oppose me being seated. They, they were from the southern states, they were Democrats. 
some of the arguments that they had, one was that the Dred Scott ruling by the Supreme Court that a black person or African ancestry uh, could not be a U.S. citizen. Therefore, I did not meet the requirements to be a U.S. senator because you had to be a citizen nine years prior to your seat. So they argued that I should not take the seat for two straight days. <laughs> they argued. God had some Republicans on my side. <laughs> Republicans simply argued, well, what do you think the Civil War was for? To negate, overrule, and throw out those racial, unfair, laws and rules that we go by. Then someone stood and said, wait a minute, he's not a hundred percent black. <laughs> he's what we call an octoroon. <laughs> half white and half black. And so therefore that Dred Scott ruling should not apply to him. Well in God's sovereign will, the vote came. 48 to 8, all the Democrats voted against me, and all the Republicans voted for me. But when I was sworn in, everyone in the gallery had to stand and receive me being seated. Well, I got in Senate and I fought, and I fought for racial equality. Many things that I stood for and fought against, I didn't win, but seeds were planted fought for things such as young black men being able to go to military academies, was trying to show my constituents that black men were capable and well able of holding some of the same jobs our white men are able to hold. Shortly after my political career, I was nominated, nominated to be the president of a college by the name of Alcorn Agriculture Mechanical School, which is now known as Alcorn State University. I was the first president. I was ousted from there after my first year because I led a campaign against a rascal of a government, governor, that was running for re-election. So they put me out, but afterwards the Democrats voted me back in. <laughs> So I spent the remainder of my time teaching philosophy. I spent the remainder of my time preaching the gospel wherever God would send me. And my legacy, my legacy continues to live on. It lives on through my daughter Susan. Susan was an editor in Seattle, Washington for a newspaper. My legacy lives on through my grandson. My grandson helped write or co-author the book, Black Metropolis. My legacy lives on. There was a young lady who's a scholar in 2002 by the name of Molefi Asante. And she said that Hiram Revels was one of the top 100 African American men in the United States. Now, the St. Paul AME Church. God bless you.